Hello everybody, Andrea Trowski here with Dental L Tutoring. Let's talk about the differences between the piezo and the cavitron. Now, where you decide to work, you may have one or the other, or you may have both. I'm pretty adaptable to anything, so I can use anything, um, but I tend to prefer the piezo only because I feel it's a lighter touch to the patient. Um, it's not as like, you know, sorry for my sound effects there, but it doesn't seem to hurt patients as much or cause them as much sensitivity. But also having that said, if the patient has heavy, heavy tartar or heavy, heavy stain, the Cavitron might be better for them and take you less time because the Cavitron's more, I guess, Invasive is not the right word, but it just seems to have more power. So um, some people prefer the piezo because it's lighter and patients seem to tolerate it a little bit better. But then some people prefer the cavitron because the tips um, are thinner usually. Um, so when you're you know holding it and using it, the tips are thinner, so they're lighter. The piezo tips are a bit thicker. Um, they're not heavy, but they're thicker, so it's, so it's just something a little bit different. Um, with the Cavitron, you can use all sides of the tip. With the Piezo, you don't want to use the tip because that can hurt, like, oh, what was that, you know? So don't use the tip on the patient for the Piezo. With the Cavitron, you can use anything, right? Um, they both pretty much have the same amount of water. It depends on sort of how much you turn it up or down. Now, keep in mind though, you don't need a lot of water, but you need enough to have it um, circulating through the piezo or the cavitron because if you don't have enough water, that's the main reason why people are sensitive. You may be thinking, okay, the patient's sensitive, so I should turn the water down. But no, turn the water up because if they're sensitive, it could be because either the piezo or the cavitron is heating up too much and that's causing them sensitivity. But then again, you will also have those patients who say to you, um, that's too much water. I feel like I'm choking, you know, then turn it down. So you will find once you start working sort of your preference, like I like a little bit of water, but not too much because then there's too much water in the patient's mouth. They're not happy. Like I just have to suction a lot more, but if you don't have enough water, then it can make the patients sensitive. So I guess a good way to explain it is to have, um, to have like a light stream of water coming from the tip. Not like a shower, not, you know, too much, but a light stream coming from it. Um, I wish I had one here to show you, but I do not. Um, if I had owned my own dental office, that would be easy, right? But I don't have one to show you. Um, even if you do like a YouTube search, um, hopefully they're correct in what they're showing you, but you only need a light stream of water. Um, in the textbooks, they call it a halo of water, a halo, H-A-L-O of water. So it's just a little bit for the piezo and the cavitron. Um, a common question is, which I did mention a little bit earlier, is, well, what if the patient's sensitive? it's probably because there's not enough um, water because you don't want the tooth heating up. If the tooth heats up, the pulp heats up, and then you could kill the tooth. You don't want that. But there's also such thing as using too much water and the patient's like, I'm drowning. You're not suctioning fast enough. Like, hurry up. You know, it does happen. Um, for the newbies, I do suggest having the patient sort of turn either this way or this way. So that way the water sort of stays on the one side. And then you could either have the patient hold the suction or sort of um, um, curl it. So it's on the inside of the cheek like this and then leave it there because um, you, you need to be able to see the linguals, right? So you need to pick up your hand mirror to see the linguals. So you can't be holding the suction and the hand mirror at the same time, right? Um, or sorry, not the hand mirror, the mouth mirror. If you tried to put the hand mirror in the mouth, you would not be able to fit it. <laughs> 
So what I meant was, was the mouth mirror. Um, but um, a little side note is a lot of patients don't want to hold it. Like I've had patients say to me before, oh, well, um, thank you for holding that suction thingy because the last hygienist made me hold it and I'm thinking I'm not here to hold my own instruments. You know, that's what they say. So I don't ask the patients to hold it because I feel that not a lot of them want to, but if they ask for it, sure. Or, you know, if they seem to be having a hard time, like, um, too much water, I'll say, would you like to hold it? You know, would you like to hold the suction so then you can sort of um, uh, suction up the water, you know? Um, but I don't ask patients to hold it at the beginning because a lot of them don't like that. Um, what else can I offer you guys? Stain. Stain, use, use the Cavitron, use the Piezo first. It's awesome for stain, but you will still have to likely polish some of that off. Um, so keep that in mind. You might be asking, do you hand scale first or use the Cavitron or Piezo first? I use the Cavitron or the Piezo first, and then I do hand scale after that. And then sometimes I'll go, okay, I think I missed a spot with my hands, um, hand scaling. I think I'll use the Piezo again to just sort of clean it up a little bit. Or even sometimes I'll use the um, Piezo or Cavitron. I will hand scale, I'll polish, and then I'll go, oh, there's still some stain. So then I'll go back with the Piezo or the Cavitron to help with that stain. So any order is up to you, but it makes sense to use either the Piezo or the Cavitron first and then the hand scale because the Piezo or the Cavitron does all the hard work for you. So that just makes sense, right? Um, ortho, use the Piezo or Cavitron. It's so much easier to clean their teeth with that because trust me if you try to hand scale you just can't get in there it's hard so with ortho use it for sure um the only time i wouldn't use it is if a patient asks me not to if they've been sensitive in the past if they have trouble sort of breathing then i might not use it because if there's too much water that's not helping them um why else wouldn't i use it if they have very sensitive teeth like if they tell you pretty much right away, I'm cold sensitive, I won't use it. If I have to, I have to. Like even those patients who say, um, that water thing I don't like, you know, I might say, well, you have a lot of stain right there. I can't use my hand instruments because otherwise I'll be here all day. Um, is it okay if I use it only over here? I'll be as quick as possible, but that will help us save a lot of time. So I might say that too. Um, don't put the ultrasonics, or I should say the piezo or the cavitron, because I don't want to confuse anybody, in the ultrasonic. Don't do it. It needs to be sterilized, but don't put it in the ultrasonic. No, 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 no. Um, and typically you would, um, wrap it up or, um, you would put it in one of those, um, sterilization bags. Um, every office I've been in, we put it in a bag, except for one. So you might have to, you might not have to. Um, typically the piezo is a, you screw it on and with the Cavitron, it's, it's just something you sort of put in. Um, with the Cavitron, you typically have to start the water with the foot pedal, f um, first. So it does have an, an attachment, sorry for my pen, but it does have an attachment. You put your foot on the foot pedal first to fill it up with um, water and then um, put the Cavitron piece in. Make sure to fill it up with water first. With, with the um, piezo though, you have the attachment, the little piezo tip, you screw it on and that's it. You don't have to worry about filling it up with water, you know, none of that. Um, does that make sense? Um, yeah, you guys. So I think those are the main things with the ultrasonic units, the piezo and the cavitron. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am actually talking a little bit about it in the board exam boot camp that we have on Monday. So I'm pretty excited about that because they do ask about it on the board exam. So if you're studying for the board exam, you need to take this board exam boot camp. I have about I think six spots left now, but it is so helpful. It is intense. You will learn a lot in two hours. Tons of stuff, everything you need to know for the board exam. Any questions? 
Just let me know, guys.